Hello, I'm so delighted to welcome today to the beautiful Prince and Drawing study room at the National Gallery of Canada, the ambassador of the Kingdom of Denmark, Hannah Fugel Eskjer. Welcome. Thank you so much, Sasha. It's really great to be here. Well, it's fantastic finally to be able to be together and to be talking about art, which feels long overdue. And in fact, to be in proximity to such an important drawing and a drawing that's important to both of us for different reasons. This is a new acquisition for the National Gallery of Canada and the first ever drawing by the painter, well, known more as a painter, Hammershoy, in a Canadian public collection. Can you tell us a little bit about the first time that you saw work by Hammershoy? I can. Actually, um, I think it's at Otto Gore Museum in Denmark because they have the largest collection and my mom was an art teacher, so she took us to museums all the time. But I've since then really enjoyed looking for Hammershoy in, in different cities and now he is present both in Paris, London, New York and here in, in Ottawa. So it's, it's kind of the a proud moment for a Dane and for me as a Danish ambassador to, to recognize a Hammershoy in a beautiful museum. Uh, and, and he has become a really important painter, part of important art history of, of Denmark, even though he was actually, I know it doesn't look controversial, but at his lifetime, he was controversial. People didn't really get his painting. It was so minimalistic, dull colors almost, as some, some would say. But now he's very recognized. I think the most recognized uh, painter and drawer of, uh, from Denmark. Well, it's true that he's so enigmatic. And I think that it's that enigmatic part of his work that really appeals today mm -hmm. in the sense of calm, um, the minimalistic approach to, well, what I mostly know of his, of his oeuvre is interiors, mm. the stillness, maybe because it's something we all long for. And the fame of Hammershoy actually seems to coincide not with his life, as you mentioned, but with the increase of his of scholarship around his work in the 1980s. And I mean that within the discipline of art history. Is that roughly when you might remember him coming into more of the spotlight in Denmark? Yeah, there was some really important work from the 80s that brought him back into focus, both in Denmark, but mostly also in internationally. And I think I agree with you on, on the point that he kind of spoke to a tendency or a change in, in how we approach life. Like the whole, uh, the Nordics are quite famous now for the for the minimalistic approach, the, the simple things, uh, the elegance. So I think that talks a lot to, to people today, and as you say, finding that calmness. And I think I find that both in his uh, interior, from, from which yeah. he's most famous, and where you have a, a painting also here at the gallery, uh, sunshine in, in the drawing room, but also in, in his drawing. And, and that, the way he kind of, the simple lines, the light, the you could say the, the, the almost architectural approach to art, uh, which I think makes him stand out and that people really appreciate today. Well, it's interesting. When I look at this drawing, I'd love to compare sort of what I see mm -hmm. to what you see, because I, I see form and I see an extraordinary confidence, um, even as a draftsperson. I mean, we know that this is a preparatory drawing for a painting, mm -hmm. um, one of several that exist. But even in preparing the composition for that painting, he is making a finished composition, something that we can look at as a standing individual work of art. And each kind of stroke of, of, of the pencil here leaves a very clear mark. Um, but then as you look closer, uh, for example, the branches and what would be the leaves, are, are it's fuzzier. It feels like something that again encapsulates a moment in time, mm. stillness, kind of a frozen, a frozen instant. Um, what do you see? I mean, what do you see of Denmark in this drawing? I see several things. I, I see many of them, like emotion that, that you're describing, um, but I also see the attraction to, to nature. Actually, this was a very busy road at his time and is a highway today. And uh, But the people are not in this drawing. So he's attracting people's attention to the nature in itself. Um, and I think that is very uniquely Danish. We're part of, of nature. Well, it's so interesting that you talk about the, the lack of people 
in, in the composition because his interiors often have one person. I mean, there's this real sense of human engagement in a moment, but in the landscape where there is no one, the landscape sort of becomes the living thing. Mm -hmm. And we see something very similar in our, what we call the group of seven, you know, Canadian painters from a similar period in time. And so I wonder if you can talk a little bit about Danish modernism, the role of landscape, and what maybe similarities you see mm. to some of the Canadian art that you've encountered while you're here. I think what is one of the things that is very interesting is that he had a very, um, he didn't have this romantic longing to nature before it was touched by human beings. Yeah. He was clearly showing there is a road. So there yeah. is human and nature interaction. And at the same time, yeah. the people are not there, but still you feel them. And, um, and maybe that is one of the things that I feel is a little different yeah. to, to, to Group of Seven, where I really feel that up in the north of Canada, I, I just came back from northern, northern Manitoba, and there's really untouched nature. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, a, that's a big privilege you have here in Canada. You have untouched, beautiful nature. While well, in Denmark, it's a small country. You have people almost everywhere. So, but he tried to take that human, the direct human, the visible human touch out of his paintings and his drawings, and still they were there. Well, that's very beautifully said. So maybe my last question would be, how would you describe Hammershoi's status in Denmark? Mm. Is he sort of a national arts hero? How is he considered by his contemporaries or you know, artists that are practicing today? Mm. It's an artist we're very proud of. Um, and I think he's one of the biggest Danish artists that is most well known uh, abroad, including here in, in, in Canada. And he has inspired creative people around the world in, in, uh, in designers, writers, filmmakers, because it really talks to um, what, a, what we may, might be longing for and also the aesthetics, like the Nordic aesthetics that have become so fashionable, even though it's way back. He really draws that into what is a very contemporary um, kind of uh, preferred aesthetics and colors of today. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here, Sasha.